Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the nucleophilic addition reactions of aldehydes and ketones, focusing on acetals. Acetals are the ultimate product when alcohols are the nucleophile. Uh, the initial product looks like something similar to the hydrate, where water was the nucleophile, so you added an OH. Uh, in this case, alcohols nucleophile, you add, you know, uh, add an OH, or you add an OR. Uh, however, this thing is called a hemiacetal because it is halfway to something else called the acetal. Uh, and the acetal involves a, a second reaction replacing the, the OH group on the hemiacetal with another uh, alkoxy group. Uh, and there, just so you know, there are some chemists out there that think that when you're dealing with an aldehyde, it's an acetal, and that you're dealing with a ketone, it's a ketal. Uh, they're technically correct, but most people use acetal to refer to these types of structures here, even when they originated from an aldehyde. Unlike hydrates, which can be formed in base, acetals generally tend to only tend to require acid, um, and you'll see why when we get through the mechanism. Okay. The, the first part uh, of the mechanism of formation of uh, the acetal is the nucleophilic addition step, and I am going to uh, use a specific acid, not, not just H+, but noting that in an alcohol, the extra proton is most likely attached to the alcohol oxygen, just like in water, the proton is most likely attached to water as the hydronium cation. And we protonate the ketone. Again, I'm just using a, uh, acetone as a generic example. Any aldehyde or ketone uh, can do this. And uh, these are equilibrium reactions. We have a lot of proton transfer steps, it's equilibrium, and so on. So then proton transfer, now uh, here comes the, the actual uh, nucleophilic attack step alcohol molecule actually actually in the bond here make my life a little easier nucleophilic attack draw in equilibrium arrows uh, in the next video I'm going to talk about the, the reverse process here so you'll understand a little bit more about my need to draw in equilibrium arrows. Alcohol is a neutral nucleophile, so we get a, a positively charged intermediate that then needs to uh, lose uh, its extra proton, and the most likely proton uh, acceptor in this also is the alcohol, uh, because it's there's lots of it around, it's the solvent. Um, and it's the strongest base in the reaction as well. All right. Copy my equilibrium arrows and copy the structure of my hemiacetal. This is a, a straight up acid catalyzed nucleophilic addition. The second part of the mechanism you are going to recognize because it's an SN1 reaction. Hopefully you, you recognize it. Um, what needs to happen now is substitute OH for OR. And the way that we're, that's going to happen is first by protonating the uh, OH group to make a better leaving group. Make some extra copies of my equilibrium arrows. I'm going to need them. 
copy my hemi acid towel over and now now it's protonated so that's a good leaving group since i've told you it's an sn1 mechanism and i've, I've told you that then you can guess that the next step is loss of leaving group the next intermediate is a carbocation it's going to look like this uh, and this carbocation has a resonance structure that's worth drawing. So, so this is a resonance stabilized carbocation by the oxygen. And you know, if you feel like you need to, for example, draw, and, and, and a number of chemists want to draw it this way, show show the the lone pair a lone pair from the oxygen. Uh, in the alkoxy oxygen helping the leaving group go, that's perfectly okay, but it's not required. And then we get a second nucleophilic attack. I, I'm only going to end up drawing this at the the one at the one version, but you could draw it at, at this version as well. Now we get something that's starting to look like the uh, acetal, but with an extra proton on it. And so, of course, we need to remove that extra proton. Oops, I, for I forgot my positive formal charge. If I was doing this on an exam, I'd take away all the points, but here we go. Uh, Take away that extra proton and make the S out. All of these steps are, are in equilibrium. So because everything's in equilibrium, I want to go uh, talk a little bit about this equilibrium and um, generally What, uh, what well, you know, wh what sides are favored? Uh, so the net reaction is your aldehyde or ketone plus two molecules of alcohol forming the acetal plus one molecule of water. And in general, for most aldehydes and ketones, uh, where things are in equilibrium is, is usually on the left. Right. In my video on hydrates, I shared that, that most aldehydes and ketones prefer the, the, the keto form and not the hydrate form. That's true here. Um, the types of things that prefer to form hydrates are going to more likely form acetals easily. And, and so that there was a benefit there. But for most of your aldehydes and ketones, the left hand side of the equilibrium predominates. But, and this is a big but. If we remove water as it forms, if we remove water as it forms, then like by doing this reaction, say uh, at a temperature above the boiling point of water, the water boils out of the reaction. Some people will draw this as, as like an up arrow, right? Le Chatelier's principle says, that the equilibrium is going to adjust to form more product because we're removing product. And so you can actually isolate high yields of acetals by simply removing the water as it is formed in one way or another. And a popular way is through distillation. In the next video, we're going to talk about the, the mechanism of acetal hydrolysis. So, and it would, so We'll also talk about how to shift this equilibrium back then to the ketone or aldehyde. 
And then the video that follows will talk about applications of acetals. Thanks for watching.